Hi, this is Trevor Smith. I'm the graduate academic assistant with Circle, and I'm just going to do a little demonstration today to show you how to make your data dance. Um, so this little help video is based on a wonderful website here called Gapminder, gapminder.org. Um, so what gapminder.org does is it helps you visualize your data in new and exciting ways. So this is what we're going to do today. Now if you take a look at the website gapminder.org, which you'll see my mouse here, gapminder.org slash upload data slash motion dash chart. This is um, where we're going to get started. Now if you look down below here you'll see a little chart and this is what we're going to try and create. So this chart right here with the countries, years, GDP, life expectancy, population, and region. We're going to replicate something like this to demonstrate circle statistics. So instead of countries, we would have a collection, and instead of years would be months and years. GDP would be the file views. Life expectancy will be the downloads for the items in the collection. And population will be the size of the content within that group. And then region is like the larger um, community or collection, whichever level you're working at. So let's go to Circle. Start off. First thing you'll need to do is to log in. Or in my case, log out for a moment. So log in. So I did my password right. And there we go. So first thing we need to do is we're going to go to the Usage Analysis Suite. Over here on the Reporting Suite in the uh, center left. And we're going to look at Collections. So what we want to do today is to come up with a little chart on some UBC affiliates. What I'm specifically interested in is seeing what kind of activity the uh, Vancouver Institute has seen. We have a collection of the Vancouver Institute's data and I want to see what it does. So I'm going to go into collections here and I'm going to select selected collections because I know which one I'm looking for. Now I know that this is under UBC affiliates so I'm going to use the tree structure to drill down to the Vancouver Institute and select Vancouver Institute lectures. Now I scroll down a little bit I'm going to select Generate Data. And what this is doing is it's showing me all the data on the collection homepage views, item page views, and bitstream downloads for the Vancouver Institute lectures. Now if I look down here, I see this nice little bar chart, but we want to do a little bit more with this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the view from graph to data. Very simple. The chart looks nice, but I'm going to need to do more with it, so I need the numbers. Now this has gotten me some of the numbers. As you can see, it goes back to November 2010. As this is November 2011, it just goes back one year by default. So if I go up into the center here, you see where it says Show Options. I can expand the time. And in this case, I want to go back to 2009. I want to go back one year. So the first selection here, this will allow you to choose the date you're starting from and the date you're ending in. And then the next little selector is you can do it by day, month, year. For our purposes, month is fine. And all I have to do is select update. Now this is giving me some new information on what I need. Problem is I don't need all of this data. If we scroll up and look at the way the reporting suite work, it includes usage data for collections homepage views, page item page views, and bitstream downloads. This is too much. We need to separate it into one thing. So I'm going to deselect collection homepage views and bitstream downloads and select generated data again. Now it's going to hold on to my date range, so that's fine. But I can now see that it's just looking at how many times the pages within this collection have been viewed. So what I need to do now is export this as a CSV file. This allows me to pull it into Excel so that I can use it. So problem is when it comes out into Excel it's kind of ugly looking or a little bit confusing. This is fairly easy to, to fix. So if you select the whole amount there, so that how many rows you got, 
you go to data and you go text to columns what we're going to do right now is we're going to pull this data out into the different uh, columns the way we need it so we want to choose delimited we go to next and then you're going to choose tab and semicolon and what this is doing right now is if we look back at the data you'll see a lot of quote marks and semicolons around the data um, the, with the CSV file it's just encapsulated the different data and, and rows so it's pretty easy for Excel to extract this if you're doing the right thing so we know that it's being separated by semicolons and there's a text qualifier of a quotation marks so that's great I hit next I like that I'm just gonna hit finish and voila I now have all my item views so first thing I need to do with this I'm gonna take this and drag it up to the top and I'm gonna rename this this uh, row views okay I'm gonna collapse oh before I do anything else I'm gonna save this file I'll just save it on my desktop as an Excel file and I'm just gonna call this Vancouver Institute there we go shrink that I'm going to go back to my my uh, usage analysis report. I'm going to select bitstream downloads and deselect item page views. Regenerate the data. So now it's looking at how many times the things have been downloaded from the site. Great. This is just what I want. Export table as CSV file. I'm just going to go through this very quickly. We highlight. We go to data. We go text to columns. Delimit is checked for us. That's great. Next, Excel remembers that we want it in semicolon checked and the text qualifier is correct. So I'm just going to hit finish and voila. Now I don't need all this information, so I'm just going to copy the stuff that I need here. Since the, my uh, date parameters haven't changed, I'm just going to keep it the way it is. I'm going to copy that. Go back to my other file, my Vancouver Institute. Excel file that I just saved, go to the next row, and paste my data. There, and I'm just going to call this downloads. Excellent. And save. Now this is part of the information I need. The next thing I need, if we just look back to that gap finder, we now have the GDP, which is the the views, life expectancy, which is the downloads. Now we need the population. We need the content. How much is in there? So for that, we're going to go to circle again. And we're going to go to the reporting suite content analysis. Now, I'm going to select first of all the date ascensioned. Time gives you a, a different piece of information, so I'm, I'm not going to get into that. But what I'll do is I'll just go to Data Ascensioned, go back a year, start it November 1st, end it. Yep, today that's fine. And the period is months. That's great. Once again, I go to UBC Affiliates, Vancouver Institute, select the Vancouver Institute lectures, get data. Voila. That tells me how much content was added to that collection in that month. That looks wonderful. So I'm going to scroll down and once again export a CSV file. Highlight all that. Text columns. Excellent. So now I'm going to copy this. Go back to my chart. Open a new sheet. And just paste that in there. Wonderful. Now what I need to do, just going to insert, actually just a moment. Now as you can see, you've probably noticed that this is kind of the wrong layout. So what I need to do is I need to change it from the, the, the axis. It's pretty easy to do in Excel. So I'm going to copy it, open another sheet once again. I'm going to right click, you go to Paste Special, click on Paste Special, you get this little box. And we want to transpose it. 
And all we're doing is we're copying and pasting the information now and flipping it on its axis. So before, while it was like this, all right, it was like that, we've just restructured the columns. It's all still the way we want it to go. Now I'm going to take that content, all of this. Hmm. Now we have a problem here because it's it's giving me this stuff as it's been added, but what I what I need is to see it as it's gone on. So that probably wasn't very clear, but just watch my little formula here. So we're going to create a new column. So I just uh, recopied the the amount that's in there. And it equals whatever's above plus whatever's right beside me here. Got that. Grab it till you see the crosshairs. Pull down. That's a handy little uh, copy down feature that Excel has. I now have all my data. Just the way I need it. Building one month after another. I'm going to go to the sheet. Go to the downloads. This next step's important. We're going to paste it. I'm going to go to paste special again. But I'm going to select values. And what that tells Excel is just use the value. Don't pull over the formula. Content. Excellent. I insert a new column. I'm going to call this uh, uh, collection, if I can spell. Over here, I'm going to call this community. And the collection, of course, is Vancouver Institute Lectures. Pull that over there. Rename this date. Once again, use my copy feature. Be careful if you use that feature on things such as numbers, because Excel is a math program in, in essence, and it will start adding things for you, so you may find problems with that. So now I'm going to call that UVC Affiliates, and now I have this looking just like my Gapminder data. So the next step is I'm going to go to Google Documents, I'm going to create a new spreadsheet. There we go. Take all my data here. Copy it. Paste it over. Voila. I need to save my spreadsheet. I'm just going to call this uh, Vancouver Institute. Great. Got my data here. It's looking good. Now I need to turn it into that wonderful looking chart. So I'm going to copy this. Well, I'm not copying, I'm just highlighting the whole selection there of data. I go to, oh dear, I'm going to insert. Sorry, that wasn't very clear. You go to insert. I'm going to go to gadget. I'm going to go to tables. No, sorry, to charts. If you scroll down charts a little bit, until you see motion chart. I've already selected my range. My title is going to be Vancouver Institute. You don't need to name it, but it's always good practice. I guess I did something a little goofy there. Gonna redo this. Copy all of this. Insert gadget motion chart. There we go. So I'm gonna do is I select this and I'm gonna move it to its own sheet. It tends to get rather cramped in here. So now if I extend this a little bit. You'll notice down in the bottom here, there's a little toggle. I usually want to pull that down because these get pretty quick. And voila, you now have your own little chart. Motion capture. So I only have a few seconds left here, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some extra data. I'm 
I pulled down the other 